All right, this is a Yamaha RXV675. And it looks pretty good right now. It's actually working okay. But sometimes the fluorescent display just blanks out and you get nothing. So I've done a bit of troubleshooting and let me show you what I found thus far. So this is a schematic for the fluorescent driver chip. And I'm interested in pin 18 right here and then pin 8 and you can see they're electrically common they're tied together so I have a 220 microfarad 50 volt electrolytic to ground and a 0.1 50 volt I believe that's a ceramic capacitor once again back to ground right there so let's go ahead and measure the voltage on pin 8 and 18 because they're common and here's where that voltage comes from, the plus 3.3 fluorescent display, FLD. And it comes from the main 5.6 volt. I believe that's an unregulated source. Anyhow, it has this little IC right here, RP130Q331D. And it just takes the 5.6 volts in and outputs 3.3 right here. It's got a chip enable pin on pin 1 that allows the main microprocessor to turn this chip on and off to either create 3.3 volts or not. So there is the fluorescent display and I can go down here. So on this jumper right here, I should have 3.3 volts. And as you can see, I've got 2.09. So let me power this off and it only comes down to 1.95 volts. So power on and notice the voltage when I power this on it goes up to 4 volts and then comes back down so power off let's put this on min max power on yes 4.121 volts that's entirely too much although the display is still working but if it gets down into into the uh, about 1.7 volt range the display will stop working it'll just freeze so we're back to 2.095 volts. It's holding kind of steady. Like I said, it does fluctuate up and down. So I'm gonna to try to do this without completely blocking everything. But here is the little regulator right there. So there's pin one. That's the chip select, turns it on and off. So when I turn the power off, it does go to zero volts. Power on, 3.2 volts. I believe pin two should be ground. There's pin two, there's pin four, meter slid a little bit. So pin four, I've got 5.5 volts going into it. And then pin three is the output and I've got 2.097 coming out. So let's go ahead and get the front panel off this unit and change that IC. I have a scrap unit that I'm gonna cannibalize one of these off the main microprocessor board. Okay, there's the chip I'm going to be using. That's IC85. I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit of flux to it to help the solder flow a little more evenly on removal. This is the donor unit. Okay, this is the recipient. I'm going to add some flux again. And we'll get the hot air blower and strip this thing off the board. So next I need to make sure I have it oriented the correct way and I'm going to try to shut some lights off and see if we can see. No, we cannot. Now yeah, let's grab a little flashlight and I'm looking for a white stripe on the left hand side next to pin one and I do see it right there. So I do believe it is oriented correctly. Let's throw this thing back together and see if we get 3.3 volts now. Okay, I have the probe on the test point. Let's power this thing on. 
and I get exactly 3.3 volts. Now I am on min-max because I wanted to look at the max, 3.318. Let's power it back off, and look at that, it actually goes back to zero before it stayed at like 1.9. Power on. I think I'm going to have a good display on this unit. So let's go ahead and get some speakers connected to it and make sure it plays beautiful music. Okay, so I've got the lights turned down so you can actually see the display on this thing. So let's go ahead and power this on. And I do get a nice bright display. And I do get audio. And it's working perfectly. I should have showed you this before, but the uh, as you increase and decrease the volume, it was very jumpy. It wasn't fast like that. Well, I think that's going to be it. The repair on the Yamaha RXV675. Let's get some lights turned on here. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment. Wait, one more thing. Take a look at this. This is not this receiver's first rodeo. If you see the melt marks on that wire wrap right there, it's been worked on before and I know that a couple of the connections on this board did not look super hot and I ended up actually finding some uh, solder flakes on the board I had to scrape off. I thought that was gonna be it, but obviously not. Anyhow, all back together, well, up and running at least. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I have a full-time job and I do these repairs in my spare time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this hopefully short little video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone, have a great day. Once again, thanks so much for watching. Stand by for possible bloopers. Everyone, have a great day. Bye-bye. Little bonus footage. More evidence this thing's been worked on. Take a look at this ribbon cable right there. It's been melted. And let me flip this around just a little bit here. And we'll take a look at these switches that have definitely seen some solder work in the past. So I don't know if it was having a switch issue. Might be a refurb unit, I'm not sure, but the telltale marks right there tell me this thing is not a virgin. Anyhow, just a bit of bonus material. Thought I'd show that to you. It's like, yeah, that, that ain't right. And a bit more bonus material. I've got my voltmeter here, my 87, across the filament leads to the vacuum fluorescent display. And now I was getting voltage on this constantly previously. In fact, I noticed that I was using my infrared camera and I could see where the display cutout was because it was warm even after the unit had been shut off for hours but still plugged in. Now, when I power this thing up, I get 5.3 volts AC. I don't think that's quite accurate because it shows it's at 99 kilohertz. But now when I power the unit off, the voltage actually drops down to zero or effectively zero. Just a bit more bonus material. Thanks for watching. RP1330. Okay, so there is the fluorescent display and on this jumper right there I should have 3.3 volts and on this jumper right here I should have 3.3 volts and then pin 3 I believe is the 5.6 across the filament leads to the vacuum 